Krakatoa makes 2.6, adds a Gaussian random operator to magma. Let's create another PAT maker, this time manually, anyway in the scene, and uh, see how the Gaussian distribution can be used on it. We'll add the magma, we'll set the position, and the position will be uh, using the Gaussian random operator with the seed, which will be the index channel because ID doesn't exist in the PAT uh, maker, as we already know. So we'll have to convert uh, this to a vector because Gaussian random always produces a float. And uh, if we take a look at the distribution now, we have random positions along the X uh, with the bell curve centered at the 0, 0, 0 and falling off uh, away uh, from that point. If we copy this operator and paste, uh, well, preserving connections, set the Y to it, and then offset the seed uh, by an integer, for example, at a value of 1, this will give us a two-dimensional Gaussian distribution centered at the 0. Uh, this is a standard normal distribution because we're using a sigma of 1 and a mean of 0. If we uh, enable the home grid to show all the subdivisions, we're going to see where the 1 subdivision is, and we have uh, a sigma of 1, uh, and uh, the fall-off goes to about 4 sigmas uh, for standard deviations away. Uh, we can stretch the distribution and also change the mean, which is the tip of the bell curve, uh, by uh, entering positive or negative values. And of course, we can copy uh, this uh, set of operators uh, to control the Z independently. If we change the add operator to add true, we're going to get a three-dimensional uh, Gaussian distribution, a Gaussian sphere. Or we can uh, set it to exactly the same C as the Y, and that gives us a diagonal uh, plane to the distribution in 3D space. Let's keep it with a different seed, and if we change the sigma to zero, uh, we'll be flattened to a disk, or we are going to get uh, ellipsoid stretched along the z-axis. Now that we saw how uh, this operator can be used for just setting the position channel, let's uh, set up something more interesting. We'll create a teapot, and uh, we'll increase the number of segments a little bit in order to get a smoother surface. Let's say 16 segments should be enough. We'll create the PAT surface from it with 100,000 particles. And we'll add a magma, which will change the position of the particles. We'll set them to the position plus the normal, that is uh, push along the normal, but the push will be controlled by uh, Gaussian random. So we'll create a function, Gaussian random. Once again, we'll need a seed, and because the PAT surface doesn't have an ID either, we'll once again type in index. And if we update, we're going to get a random distribution along the normal, both in positive and negative directions, so outwards and inwards. And let's set a color in order to visualize this a little bit better. We'll blend through colors red and yellow, we can display the swatches in order to see which one is which. And then we'll connect the same Gaussian random output uh, to control the blending. However, we know that with sigma 1, we have a, about four sigmas away, uh, still uh, particles being distributed. So let's divide the output by the sigma multiplied by, let's say, 3, that means 3 standard deviations away will be our blend distance. And now if we change the sigma, the color distribution will always be fixed within 3 standard deviations from the surface. Let's reduce the number of particles a little bit. With uh, 10,000, we can see a little bit better. We have particles going inwards and outwards, and uh, all the particles that are inside are currently shaded in red. So if we set the output of the Gaussian random to an absolute, the particles will be going outwards, 
and all will be getting the correct uh, color gradient from red to yellow. We can expose this uh, sigma uh, input value and then we can adjust the distribution away from the surface. So this is a much more interesting implementation where a random operator is used to control uh, the push along a normal.